Hey, Sojourner. I want to take this moment to have us collectively come together with this pause meditation. There is always something happening. And right now in this moment, my tire is flat. And I felt like this was the proper pause time since I'm not going nowhere until it's fixed. Don't worry, I'm in a safe place. I'm at the tire and lube place. Where are you? What place geographically are you in? And if you're in a place where you can make some space for this meditation, no matter what the background noises are, choose to pause. Because what I have to share with you right now is really about the way we're going to make space for grief. You know, violence is a threat to the nervous system. And it affects our bodies as such. Moving our nervous systems to react in ways that may feel undesirable or unfavorable because of the inflammation. And these reactions are normal and expected responses to the ongoing violence, danger, and trauma that we experience. You know, what's happening in our world can be described and felt as trauma, since trauma is anything that happens too much, too soon, too long, and too fast without enough reparative action. Pause right there, because that is what we are going to engage in while I wait for my flat tire to be fixed. Reparative action. My car must wait to be repaired, and I must patiently wait for my repairs. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Because the violence we're experiencing in churches and schools and parks, it keeps happening and we need a place to soothe ourselves individually and collectively because our nervous systems are collective as well as personal. So what do we do? We make space for grief. We make space to move through the shock. The disbelief, the sadness, the anger, the rage, the acceptance of being able to be human in these places. All of it is a part of grief. And while grief may feel a lot like depression sometimes, they're not the same. Both are neurobiological events. A grief is the experience that open hearts go into when there is loss. However, grief is active if we allow it to be. Depression, on the other hand, is a survival response that isn't as active. You see, our nervous systems, they move into a shutdown state and we disconnect and we isolate and our bodies slow way down and movement is hard. But open heart, I want you to braid your grief with grace. Grief begs for movement, movement of your emotions, of our emotions, personally and collectively, of our bodies and of our memories personally and collectively and enough enough of us can allow movement of our grief which is what this is a call to action for in this meditation and if enough of us can allow that movement of our grief and the sensations and the emotions that come with it when there is oppression present it loses the war against our bodies an oppression that exists to keep us disconnected from ourselves and each other, to keep us numb so we don't feel capable of 
embodying and engaging in individual or collective action. Feeling our feelings, if and when we have the capacity, keeps us empowered enough to connect, to reimagine, to create, to advocate, and to resist injustices. So Sojourner, if you can today create this space with me to notice what's happening in your body and when feeling feels like too much, move your attention to the small things outside of yourself that feel good, pleasurable, such as journaling, whether you journal by scribbling or by speaking or by taking photos. Get a hug, feel the soft fur of a pet or the grass or floor beneath your feet, cool water on your skin, tend to your plants or play with Play-Doh, cry, scream, listen well. Listen to a sound bath and rock or sway your body or engage yoga, play hopscotch with others or alone. Take an aromatherapy shower or bath, sis. Go on a nature walk and take pictures of beautiful things. These are not escapes. These are rest places. Remember, we're choosing grace in our grief. We're gonna braid our grief with grace. These are grounding places of grace, personally and collectively. And eventually, there will be space in your body, in my body, and within our collective spaces to grieve the world we live in and the world we hoped would be available for our ancestors, for us, and for our children. And for now, however, Feeling our emotions is best done slowly. There is no rush and in small doses. Otherwise, it all just feels horribly unbearable. And as we continue this meditation, I want you to realize that even after we are finished on this episode, If you need support moving towards depression remission or recovering from trauma, I want you to create and curate a Shalom Making Support Squad with the capacity to help you move through the tough stuff. Because we are not alone. And we are embodied in all of this, through all of this, because of our embodied God. And do know that there is no one way to process profound loss. And the idea that you should be meeting certain external benchmarks, that's just, both unrealistic and it is unkind. So lean in to wherever you are, knowing that you are embraced. No matter where you are, whether you are at the Tyron Lou or whether you are in a classroom setting or whether you are sitting in the middle of your floor unable to move, you are embraced right where you are. I want to recommend you go back to my archives in fall of 2017, September, Self-Care Awareness Month. I launched a series on grief. Return to it so that you can flesh out things in your flesh, in that body that you have been gifted with. 
and journey with me through the many layers of grief. if hope seems to be fleeting it's because hope hangs out on the fringes on the outskirts the unlikely places hope is always available in the places that no one none of us would dare to go and yet Hope welcomes us with outstretched arms, even a hope that feels shattered is a shalom-making sanctuary. Mm -hmm.